Assalamu alaikum. Uh, my name is Leon John, and uh, firstly, I'd like to thank my friend uh, Nurullah for bringing me here and uh, giving me this opportunity to hear some wonderful teachings from you. Now, I've got two questions to ask. First is, what does it take to be a true Muslim? And the second question is, Muslims pray five times a day. Why don't uh, we Catholics and other religions pray five times a day? Is there any explanation for this? Brother asked a question. He asked two questions. First is that, what does it take to be a Muslim? What is the requirement? Yes. And second is, why do Muslims pray five times, Catholics pray less? What is the reason? As far as what does it take to be a Muslim, as I mentioned earlier, Muslim means a person who submits the will to God. So if you submit your will to God and follow the commandments of God, you are a Muslim. The number one thing is that you bear witness that there is no God but Allah, no God but one true Almighty God, and you bear witness that Prophet Muhammad is the servant and the messenger of this God. This is the basic faith. It is a fundamental creed known as Shahada. So once you say this, you enter into the basic fundamental creed. And to be a good Muslim, you should submit your will to Almighty God. So if you follow the commandments given by Almighty God in the Quran and the teachings of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, in the authentic hadith, then you'll be a good practicing Muslim. As far as the second question is concerned, your second question? Second question is Salah. Salah five times. Salah. Yeah. Why do Muslims pray five times and we Christians, we pray less? The reason is, we Muslims, Salah is a sort of programming towards righteousness. See, normally people, they say pray. Pray is not the right translation of Salah. Pray means to ask for help. In Oxford Dictionary, pray means beseech. In Salah, we don't merely ask for help. Besides asking for help, we are getting guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In other religions, they only ask for help. In Islam, besides asking for help, we are getting guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For example, if the Imam, after Surah Fatiha, he recites the verse of the Quran, of Surah Maida, chapter number 5, verse number 90. Ya ayyuhu alladhina amunu, O you believe, inna mal khamru al maisuru, most certainly intoxicants and gambling, wal anzabu al aznamu, dedication of stones, divination of arrows, rich sum min amili shaitan, these are Satan's handiwork. Fashtanibu lalukum tufliyun, Abstain from this handiwork that you may prosper. Here we are getting guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in our salah that don't have intoxicants, don't gamble, don't do fortune telling, don't do idol worship. These are certain handiwork. Abstain from it that you may prosper. So besides asking, besides asking for help, besides asking, we are getting guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we are thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I prefer calling Salah as programming towards righteousness. Programming towards righteousness. And if you analyze today, the amount of evil we see around us, you know, bad things happening, evil thing, obscenity, cheating, there are high chances that we can get deprogrammed. How a doctor tells you, for a healthy body, three meals a day. So our Creator, Almighty God, knows that we have to be programmed five times a day so that we will be on the straight track. So He is our Creator, He knows that. So if you are a true Christian, even you should offer five times. You know why? Because if you read your scriptures, the book of Exodus, the book of Acts, like how we do evolution, Surah Maida chapter 5, verse number 5, that you have to wash your hands, wash your face, rub the head with water and wash the feet up to ankle. Similarly is mentioned in the book of Acts. Similarly in the book of Exodus. That Aaron and Moses, they washed their face and hands before they appeared in front of the Lord. Same thing, the basic part of Sijda, the Sujood, if you read Genesis chapter number 17, verse number 3. It says that Abraham fell on his face and prayed to God. In Numbers, chapter number 20, verse number 6, Aaron and Moses, they fell on their face and prayed to God. Joshua, 
chapter number 5 verse number 14 Joshua fell on his face and prayed to God if we read the gospel of Matthew chapter number 27 that Jesus Christ peace be upon him in the garden of Gethsemane he took a few steps forward and fell on his face and prayed to God can an acrobat fall on his face and pray to God better than the way we Muslims do when you do sujood we put the highest part of the body the forehead on the lowest part of the ground and say glory be to Allah the most high glory be to Allah the most high thrice so all the prophets of the Bible they prayed the same way as as we Muslims pray and Jesus Christ peace be upon him said in the gospel of John chapter number 16 verse number 12 to 14 I have many things to say unto you but he cannot bear them now for he when the spirit of truth shall come he shall guide you unto all truth he shall not speak of himself all that he hear shall he speak he shall glorify me now Jesus Christ peace be upon him said that wait for the spirit of truth shall come wait for the spirit of truth talking about Muhammad peace be upon him and there are various references of Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him in the Old Testament as well as the New Testament in, if you read the New Testament in the book of Deuteronomy chapter number 18 verse number 18 in the book of Deuteronomy chapter number 18 verse number 19 in the book of Isaiah chapter 29 verse number 12 in the Song of Solomon chapter number 5 verse number 16 all of these references speak about the coming of the last and final messenger Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him even in the New Testament Gospel of John chapter number 14 verse number 16 Gospel of John chapter number 15 verse number 26 Gospel of John chapter number 16 verse number 7 Gospel of John chapter number 16 verse number 12 to 14 all of these references speak about the last and final messenger prophet Muhammad peace be upon him so if you're a true Christian if Christian means a person who follows the teachings of Jesus Christ peace be upon him we Muslims are more Christian than the Christian themselves if you're a true Christian you have to follow the teachings of prophet Muhammad peace be upon him and do ablution before Salah you should do sujood and you should pray five times a day Hope that answers the question. Thank you, Brother Leon, for your questions. The next question from the brother in the rear. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Sir, I am having a question. This question is being framed by my professor. I am a student of first year computer science and my sir is teaching me physics. His name is Rajiv Bhatt and I am from NG Acharya DK Marathe College Chembu. He is convinced by all the, I mean to say, what, what misconceptions regarding Islam was there. He has accepted that it is not a misconception. So he is not only convinced by his last point that is ruthlessly killing of a goat during Bakrit. So can you just help me tell some of the verses that have been quoted in Bhagavad Gita? If I heard your question correctly, your professor wants to know that can we have non veg from the Hindu scripture? That's your question? I mean to say the ruthless killing of a goat. The ruthless he killing? He believes that you are killing a goat directly from the, slowly, slowly from the, from the neck. Brother asked the question, why ruthlessly killing? He doesn't, he agrees with killing of the goat, but why ruthless killing is his question. Yeah. Fine. So he's convinced that you can have non veg but he's asking why do the Muslims, they torture the animal before killing? Yeah. There's one jhatka, fatak, the animal dies. Why is this zabiha? Yeah. Slowly torturing. There was a discussion, a similar discussion going on between a Sikh and a Muslim, and the Sikh read the same question. You Muslims, you are merciless. You are ruthless. You all kill the animal slowly and torture the animal to death. We seek one jatka of attack and the animal dies. So the Muslim replied, No, we Muslims, we are martka bacha, we attack from the front, we are masho. You seek, you all are coward. You are buzzil, you attack from behind. Anyway, this is not the real reason why we Muslims do Zabiha. This was his wisdom, his ikma. This is not the real reason why we Muslim do Zabiha. The reason we Muslim do Zabiha, that the Islamic slaughtering is, when we do Zabiha, we cut the throat and the vessels of the neck and the windpipe without damaging the spinal cord. Because if the spinal cord is damaged, then there will be cardiac arrest and the nerve going to the heart will be severe and the blood will immediately stagnate. Now, when we cut the throat and the windpipe, and the vessels of the neck without damaging spinal cord the heart is yet pumping 
and majority of the heart it flows out of the body today science tells us that blood is a very good media of germs and bacteria so we muslims we are hygienic we want to let the blood flow out of the body and when when the blood flows out of the body even the toxins and the germs and the bacteria that contain in the blood flows out of the body there are less chances of having diseases when we have that meat